Welcome back everyone. I'm Jason Jensen and you're watching Jason Jensen Trains. In today's episode, we're going to be building a very large kit. It is from Carolina Craftsman Kits. I have been looking forward to building this for a very long time. Uh, this is an incredible kit designed by the owner, Jeff Grove. Well, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and be sure to check out some of my past videos. I have a lot of helpful tips uh, for beginners and advanced people. So let's head over to the workbench and get started on this. Again, it is a model from Carolina Craftsman Kit. Here's a close-up picture. There is so much inside this box. Um, it comes with a set of instructions for the buildings. And then it also comes with a set of instructions to build the diorama if you want to. Um, it also comes with a, a boat. A separate model from Seaport Model Works. Um, it comes with a jib crane from Titchy. Um, uh, there's the, the dock walls uh, if you want to build the diorama. Um, there's just so much inside of this kit. So to start, we're going to make this structure right here. I am going to make some changes to it. Uh, there is a door on the side behind this little pop-out structure. And uh, I'm going to get rid of that and fill that in with some wood. That's on this wall here. So I'm just going to fill this in. And then we'll go ahead and brace everything. And then start to stain and paint our walls. So as you can see, uh, like I mentioned before, there's a pop-out structure on the side. I am going to put that right there. The areas on both sides of it, I'm going to cut away and then I have wood that matches this uh, from Northeastern Scale Lumber. and. I'm going to fill those two sections in with that matching wood. And then this area up here will be corrugated metal. And same with these. These will also be covered in corrugated metal. So this is where our pop-out structure will be. I've cut away these two sections. Then... I cut wood pieces to fill that in. So I did end up putting a door and a window in on this section. And the door and window are from Titchy Train. And I'll put a link in the description below. A great place for um, scratch builders. Um, they have lots of different sizes of windows and doors. Uh, big freight doors, everything. So as you can see, I've got all of my pieces stained. And I used slate gray and a very small amount of black. And mix that together and then I added a lot of water and then just brushed it on. I then took my pastel chalks and with mostly black went along the bottom and then also did some streaking of the boards. And then I don't know if you can tell on camera, 
But I also did brown. Just here and there, a hint. Um, I then took, I also used a very light gray. Let me see if I can grab it for you. Uh, there's a very light gray. And I also brushed some of that on here and there. So I feel like a lot of the, uh, the weathering and effect was done with pastel chalks. So as you can see, I got my windows in and the walls um, assembled. Next, I have my roof card. And I actually scored it on the bottom so that the uh, has a little raised area right at the end bends a little bit next I am preparing my shingles the shingles that come with the kit are a uh, a reddish color and uh, I didn't think it really fit uh, for the way I'm modeling it so I took that and spray painted it a tan color so you can see that's the back side kind of a reddish and I sprayed it tan and then on this sheet I actually dry brushed it with um, some burnt umber so I took kind of a ratty ratty brush and dry brushed it going in one direction again using burnt umber so here's our structure so far so you can see I painted the underside of my roof the uh, gray color and also the edges uh, I'll get that glued on so next we have to make a uh, little pop-out structure that that sits right here so this is it these are the sections they give you in the kit and we'll put some bracing, some wood bracing on the back of it and put this together. I'm going to cover this in black construction paper to make it look like it's covered in tar paper. And what I've done is I'm going to tear the end of the black construction paper so that some of the boards are exposed at the bottom. So I've actually drawn... Um, I don't know if you can see that, but I've cut, I've cut lines in it to represent boards. I actually put some little nail holes with a very sharp number two pencil. Now I'm going to do a light wash over it of neutral, neutral gray. Uh, just so that it sort of matches this wood a little bit more. And then I'll go ahead and put the uh, black construction paper over it. So I've glued on my black tar paper. Here is the back side of the wall. And now we'll just trim everything. I lowered that door. That's why I left some black so that it goes all the way to the floor. And then we will get our windows cut. And then there's thin boards that get put um, down that will cover those seams. So I'm gluing on all of the strips 
that run down the length of the wall. And I just put a line of glue on my palette. I dip it in it, dab it off. So I'm just putting a thin board over every seam. The paper is 3 eighths of an inch thick. Each piece is that wide. So these boards are about 3 eighths apart from each other. Like everything, it just takes some time. People ask me all the time, how do you build so fast? Well, I think some of it is possibly in your head. If you're telling yourself that there's certain things that you don't like to do, like, say, windows and cutting acetate for windows and gluing them in, um, you tend to slow down when it comes to doing those things or you put it off some people may even put it off and start another build and never finish the first model because there's stuff on it that they don't like to do so if um, <laughs> it may sound crazy but uh, if you tell yourself that you love all aspects of the hobby then um, you just won't get slowed down ever. I've built so many models that uh, now I think it's just trusting my instinct and in using uh, the techniques that I've learned that work best for me. So it's just a matter of just doing it and getting it done. Um, and then I know years ago when I first started, uh, I would finish one project like this and I would sit there and look at it for a long time. And uh, if you do that after every little step of the build, if you sit there and stare at the project, um, it adds up to a lot of wasted time. So. Uh, now I just build it and then when it's all complete then I can sit back and look at it and enjoy it. I don't know if I'm completely sold on the torn um, tar paper with the exposed wood but it's something different on one of my models and um, I tried something new. Don't know if I'll do it again, I may. But it gives it a, a different look than the rest of my models. You don't want all of your models to look the same. So I'm getting ready to um, glue my roof on. And I put some bracing on there just for a little extra support. Now, We will just use a uh, regular full strength Elmer's glue. I always say full strength because they make white Elmer's glue and it'll say uh, school glue on it. And the school glue is, um, I don't know if it has water in it. It's just a watery, it's a thinner glue than the, um, the full strength. Um, it'll say extra strong formula. This, this one is just thicker, that's all. It's nice because if you adjust the nozzle, you can control um, just how much glue comes out. Now we're going to take a brush and we're just going to run it along the edge underneath clean up any glue that is spilling out. 
I did want to mention that I trimmed my roof cards and made them a little bit smaller. And I do that on a lot of my models. And I'll show you. Um, you can see how far it hangs down. It actually covers some of the side and, and some of the windows. And that's maybe how it is in real life. Um, I prefer to see more of the side of the building and, and more of the windows since I put so much work into it. So I always cut my roofs back so there's not as much overhang. So I just glued in uh, a piece of bracing just to help support the roof a little bit. Um, I always add extra bracing to the walls and the roof. Uh, because we'll be getting it wet with glue and applying either shingles or tar paper or corrugated paper. Uh, the point is that it's going to get wet from the glue and we don't want it to sag. So, so I have painted the underside gray and the edge. Always remember to do that. And now we'll get this glued on. And again, I trimmed all of these roof cards. So there is our structure so far. Um, I am very pleased with this model and how everything is fitting together. Uh, it's a great kit. Next, we are gonna rust some signs. And I'm just going to lay down the instructions and use the back side of it. Here is the sheet of signs that comes with the kit. I have cut out um, the circle. And there's a little sign down here. We're going to rust these. So I'm going to grab my pastel chalks. And I have four different brushes that I use for um, uh, my pastels for weathering and doing rust. We are going to use the number two. And we're using this uh, kind of a uh, terracotta orange color. So we're just going to scrub our brush over the past the pastel chalk. And then we're just going to streak it down. Then we're going to use burnt umber and we're going to use a sponge and I you want it you don't want it to be a clean tear you want to tear little pieces off so that it's just kind of rough and jagged so we'll just dip that into the paint. We're going to dab some of it off on the paper and very lightly. You want to start off really slow and gradually build up your rust. And we're really just going to go around the edge. Go a little heavier towards the bottom. And same on this little sign. Um, let's go with a darker shade. Let's actually use raw umber. And we're going to paint the edge of the paper. This will get rid of the 
uh, paper look. You should always paint the edge of a paper sign. Even if it's a brand new sign and you don't have any rust on it, take some light gray and just paint the edge of the paper. That way it won't look like you just stuck a paper sign on the side of your building. I'm just taking some of this dark and dabbing it a little bit towards the bottom. Okay, then we'll paint the edge of our small one. So I did some work in the middle of the night, uh, so let me give you a little update. Uh, I made a, mixed a light wash and painted some individual shingles. And then after they dried, uh, I went over and dry brushed it. Um, I got the doors painted and put on. So next, I am moving on to, um, there's two more structures in the kit that need to be put together. And in the instructions, they have the two combined. Let me show you quick. Right here, you'll see the two structures are combined. Um, I am actually building mine separately, and I think I'm going to put it over to the side, possibly in between the two. Haven't haven't quite decided yet how I'm going to do it. But here's where we're at so far. So, just like on the first structure, I made a stain using neutral gray and a little bit of black stained all of my walls and then also at the same time painted my windows uh, the windows are basically just neutral gray to begin with um, on these walls i went over them each individual board i drug lightly drug my paintbrush across them to give it kind of a peeled paint effect and I used French wine. So I've got the little structure all glued together. Now I am uh, putting the roof on. So I'm going to paint the underside just on the overhang area. And again, I'm just using a neutral gray. And then I'm also painting the edges. So I just finished putting the tar paper on the roof. And I didn't show it because I've done it so many times in other videos and I have an entire video just dedicated to how I do tar paper roofs. So um, be sure to go check that out. Uh, next, I'm just going to pick at it a little bit to kind of rough up the edges. Because next we're going to um, dry brush it. Okay, I think that's good. Now, we're going to use... We're going to start with using neutral gray. Um, we'll see how that looks. Because I don't want it to be too extreme. just want it to be kind of subtle. So we're just going to dip our paint... Or our brush, sorry, into the paint. And 
wipe most of it off. Okay, that looks good, but I do want to go a little bit lighter. I'm going to go with slate gray. So as you just saw, you can always go lighter. I started with a darker shade first to see what it would look like. Now I'm switching to a lighter shade and again, um, wiping most of the paint off of my brush. So I like the slight gray. You can see it just a little bit more. And again, we'll go heavier on the edges and along the bottom. Now if you want to, you could also dry brush some of the raised boards. Real quick, before I forget, I wanted to show you that I put a vent on both ends. And all I did was I took my Dremel tool and drilled a hole on both ends and then painted my little vents. You know, and I don't, don't really remember where I got those vents. Um, I believe Foscale Models sells vents. Um, I'm sure other places do. Um, if you'd like, just do a Google search for HO scale wall vents or exhaust vents. But I think it was a nice uh, little touch to it. Next, we are working on um, the third structure, um, the red one. And I've already painted my corner trim and now I am painting all of my windows and doors and I am first starting with just neutral neutral gray sorry I've been uh, working a lot at night so I've been going through the coffee using my uh, HO Scale Customs mug. For any of you that don't know, um, visit HOScaleCustoms.com. They do a weekly podcast on um, structure building. Uh, they also have videos on their website. It is just a great source of information for any model railroader. Uh, it's a father-son team. Um, they're, they're very funny to listen to. And like I said, they have a lot of helpful tips. So be sure to check them out. Again, it is uh, HO Scale Customs. Dot com. And they have a Facebook page and but if you go to their website you'll find all the information on there. So and it's Brett and Todd Wiley. I listen to them quite a bit at the workbench uh, while I'm working. And if I'm not listening to them, I usually have music going. Next, we're gonna paint our window in trim. So, I am taking pale gray, and then camel. I wanna test this to see how it's gonna look. Um, I'm going to put a small drop of neutral gray in it. Okay, I like that color. Now, get a sponge. Okay, we'll find a small brush. So I'm just kind of dabbing it 
and really trying to get into all the little corners because in real life paint would stay more in the corners in the cracks and it would chip more on the surface and then after that dries we'll take some pastel chalks and um, add some dirt towards the bottom of it so I'm starting to glue in my doors and windows and I wanted to show you quick on the back you'll notice the bracing covers up the window I did that so that when I stained it and painted it that it would not warp if I only went to the bottom of the window the top part would have curled on me so now that that's dried and painted I can cut that out you just have to be careful not to <laughs> cut through your wall well, hopefully I cut through enough yes you just want to take your time be gentle so that you don't break or crack your wall And there you go. Now we can just glue our window in. This, I think, is a must. You can buy a set of files that maybe have, I don't know, five. And you get a, a triangle shape, a flat shape, a round shaped. And it's just so easy to quick clean up edges that maybe have paint or that are a rough cut. Uh, very handy. Files are extremely handy to have on hand. Next, we'll quick do our little smokestack. Um, normally, I spray a primer on the castings, and I definitely recommend doing that. Um, I just forgot to do it so um, so first we're gonna do a coat of raw umber and we're not trying to cover it solid we're just trying to get a thin base coat on it doesn't even have to be neat I'm just getting a light coat on it okay I'll hold it up close so you can see um, see it's not completely covered now we're using burnt umber this one's definitely covering a lot better and you can be strategic and see I'm just kind of doing the sides in the very top I'm leaving some of that uh, silver same with the uh, the very front just leaving a little bit of the silver showing so I've cut all my strips and glued the roof on next we're going to sand these and i've shown this quite a few times in videos but i use this um, chopping block and i turn it upside down and then i take 150 grit sandpaper and sand the edges just kind of rough it up this is allowing the uh, black of the construction paper to show through the green I don't know why I chose to do green um, just again to give it a different look I guess so that all my buildings aren't all the same I think it'll look nice too against the red and it's a dark green so it won't stick out too much 
So I've got the tar paper all put on. And I built a little dormer that goes on it. So I've got my small windows glued in place. And I added a smokestack on the back side. Um, got some windows put on this one. And did this little resin casting which comes in the kit. This also comes in the kit. Next, we're going to build the water tank that sits on the top of the roof right here. And you can see it pictured right there. So it's nice. Um, all the parts come in their own separate bag. The instructions were also in this bag. So, uh, I've read through the instructions and it seems pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Um, it's just going to take a little bit of time. So um, we'll get started on that. I thought I would show you quick um, how I paint the detail castings that we just glued on. Um, I'm using raw umber. And we're just going to put a thin coat on to start with. And we're not worried about having it be a, a solid coverage. We just want to get a thin layer on. We'll come back and put a heavier coat on after this one dries. But you're definitely still seeing the um, white of the straw. And that's okay. We'll come back after that dries. And put a second coat on same with these so by the time we're all done we'll go back and the first one will be dry i know years ago when i first started i would get so frustrated because i felt like i had to cover it in one coat of paint and nowadays I'll do two, sometimes even three thin coats of paint, slowly building it up till there's a good coverage. So for those of you who follow me on Facebook, you know that recently I have started building a, a brand new layout. So some of the models that I've started uh, that I haven't completed. Uh, the reason I haven't completed them yet is because I knew in the back of my mind that I'd be starting a layout. So I didn't want to do an entire diorama base. This way I can put them on the layout and place them exactly where I want them and uh, build the scenery up around it. I had known that I wanted to start another layout, but after I visited the uh, Franklin and South Manchester, that really sealed the deal for me. Um, seeing that layout really impressed me and really truly inspired me so i'm very excited to be starting uh, my layout and i have so many buildings already done that i think sections of it will move pretty fast i don't want it to go too fast i actually want to uh, take my time and Enjoy the whole process because there will be a lot more kits to build and I don't want to fill up the entire layout 
right away and then run out of room. I'm actually going to put the buildings pretty close together, make it pretty detailed. That way I have a lot of space and I can work on it for years. But I'm looking forward to doing videos on more than just structure building. I'll be doing videos on laying track and wiring and scenery work. So I think it'll be a good way to expand the YouTube channel. Okay, now we'll go back to the first one. Now that it's completely dry and add our second coat. So the first area on my new layout will be a, a waterfront scene. Since I've been doing so many waterfront structures, I think it'll be a fun place to start. So real quick, I'm going to use burnt sienna and put a light wash over uh, everything that we just painted. Okay, so real quick. Back to our water tank. So this piece here is very delicate and you have to take a very sharp blade and cut all those pieces now we're going to take these pieces we're going to take four of them and we'll glue them in for the four legs. So our water tank is complete. Very easy to assemble. Um, I'm gonna leave the top off of mine and make it look like there's actually water in it. So what I'm going to do is to seal that wood because we want it to look like water. So I'm just going to put a bunch of glue and then we will take a wet brush and smear that around. Make sure it goes all the way up against the sides. We just want to get rid of that wood texture. Now we'll let that completely dry and then we'll paint this entire thing. And then there's a ladder too that goes on it. So I just cut a thin layer off the top. I felt it was a little too tall. So all I did was I very carefully poked a hole in the side of it well first ran my blade back and forth until I broke through and had a thin little cut I then went in with my scissors poked into that side there and then trimmed all the way around very carefully so I painted our little water tank neutral gray I then put a light wash of burnt umber over it. Next, I'm going to use a tan color from folk art called Camel. And I'm just going to lightly dry brush it.
I'm getting most of the paint off of my brush. Now we'll just lightly go over the sides. So now we have to glue, we have to wrap the uh, thread around it. And then there are these little um, individual turnbuckles that have to be cut off and, and glued on there. So for all of the individual turnbuckles, I first painted them raw umber then just put a light wash of black uh, over it. So hopefully it matches the thread a little bit more. Now we'll mark where those go on the water tank and glue them on. So they give you one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Well, I don't know if we need eight, but let's use, let's just use five. Now, we have to wrap this around six times and glue it to the ends of those little turnbuckles. Okay, so this is where we're at so far. I've got one more to put on and I'm gonna show you how I've been doing it. Um, there's probably an easier way. You could probably just put super glue on one end, hold it, wrap it around and super glue it on the other end but I am getting my thread in the glue because the Elmer's glue dries clear we'll get some put right on the end of the thread we'll press it right into place that one went easy. The easiest of all of them, trust me. The first two were um, a struggle. It was uh, very difficult. We'll get this glued into place. And then we'll get our water painted. And get our ladder put on there. These two buildings are pretty much done. Now this... Um, this kit comes with an entire boat that you can build. And I will show you quick. So there is the boat. So uh, very simple instructions, has part list, um, very easy. Um, that's the boat that is completely assembled and then it comes with a second boat that is um, to maybe look like it's being built. I don't know if you can see, but it has all the engraving. It's resin, but it has all the individual boards. Great models. And these are both from Seaport Model Works. And also, in the box, you get everything to create the diorama. So, there is a 
crane. Let me grab the building quick. So this building here has Let me see if I can find a good picture of it. it has a ramp going up into it. And you can see that boat there is the one that's being built. So next to that, um, I don't know if there's a good picture, but there's a crane. There's this big crane. Uh, it's called a jib crane. And it would go right here. And it would swing and uh, help those um, boats possibly up inside there. So again, it's uh, very detailed parts. Um, I've put these together before. Very easy, but it's a great little detailed kit. Then we have We have our retaining walls. Sorry, I have a lot of glue <laughs> and paint all over my fingers. Uh, again, resin parts, very nice. Lots of detail. Um, there's a brick smokestack and I may uh, I think I'll put that on on here on this one so it's a brick smokestack and then a, there's a pipe that comes out of the top of it but again it's a uh, very detailed with all the uh, brickwork Um, there's a nice pipe and that is maybe on the back side um, maybe I'll put that there with some wires um, supporting it Um, and then the brick, maybe the brick smokestack um, could get put on here. It also comes with a little rowboat. And I believe, looks like there's possibly two of them. Uh, there's a bag of stairs, some um, fencing, um, a ladder. You have tanks, um, crowbars, pickaxe, uh, trash can, um, brooms. Um, just a whole bunch of little... Uh, detail parts that can be put around it. I will eventually be building docks that these are piers that these uh, sit on. So I'll be adding all these detail parts around it. So there's extra corrugated paper. Um, there's more fencing. I'll be using that around it. Even more fencing, quite a bit of fencing. It's great. Um, here is a ladder that can be made. I didn't use them because I had my own, but it comes with um, a very good sized piece of chipboard comes with black construction paper 
and then a whole sheet of clear acetate um, man this is enough for many many kits so it's great that they give you so much extra um, there's extra thread um, it comes with give me a second sorry about that um, it comes with this brass wire for your um, gooseneck lamps and they give you <laughs> sorry all right they give you six gooseneck lamps so i'll probably do two lamps above the sign one above the door um maybe one above this door here Uh, I haven't decided where I'll put all the all the lamps. There's a door back here that I could put one above. So um, the amount of stuff that they give you is really incredible. Um. They gave you a good length of straw for pipes, um, smokestacks, uh, whatever you want to use it for. So again, this is probably as far as I'll go on this until I get my layout um, figured out and figure out exactly where I want to put these on my layout. And then I'll go in and, like I said, build my piers up and completely detail this kit. Um, but, again, I'm just super impressed with everything that you get inside of this kit. Um, I think it is worth every penny. As I'm putting everything back in the box, all the instructions and extra parts, I'm noticing, I'm finding... Uh, even more stuff. Uh, it comes with extra laser cut doors. Um, here are some uh, really big doors. So uh, they give you so much extra stuff in this kit. It's, it's fantastic. And again, they have a complete... Um, pamphlet booklet on how to make the uh, diorama so there are the uh, the retaining walls and the fencing that I showed you and they go into detail on how to build this entire scene. There is the uh, crane that I was showing you. So I just can't say enough good things about this kit I am just um, super impressed with it and so I hope to build something similar like this on my layout I hope you enjoyed today's video this was such a fun build and like I said I am NOT finished with this uh, as soon as I get my layout to a point where I can plant these structures on there uh, where I want them to go, I will fully detail it. But I was so impressed with this kit. Not only with the amount of stuff that you get in the box, but 
how well it goes together. Um, it just, it's a very impressive kit. Uh, I really enjoyed uh, building this. For those of you who follow me on Facebook, you know that I am starting a brand new layout. So some of the projects in the past that I haven't finished, um, I will now be finishing them uh, because they'll have a home on my layout. For example, I started this very large project a while back and um, this will now be going on the layout so all of the roads and driveways and scenery will all be placed on the layout so um, it is very very exciting well thank you so much for watching and until next time happy modeling everyone